Welcome to the my-moo.com podcast. my-moo.com is your source for information on James Churchward and his theories of the lost continent of Moo. Ancient Aliens and James Churchward In a previous podcast entitled James Churchward and Space Aliens, I attempted to address the phenomena of aliens and how it intersected with the theories of James Churchward. The previous presentation neglected to expound on space aliens that were not channeled entities, and although James does not specifically mention them, the issue definitely needs to be discussed. To reiterate a few points from the earlier podcast, 1. James did not discuss space aliens in his books, whether they were channeled or not. 2. James did mention Vimana. However, it is never implied in James' works that these craft travel into outer space or to other planets. And number 3. I am not arrogant enough to believe that our human civilization on Earth is the only spark of intelligence in the universe. According to James' translation of the Nikal Tablets, a Supreme Spirit brought about creation in seven commands, the seventh being the creation of man. James makes it clear that humans are a special and unique creation, or at least the people that wrote the tablets believe they were. Some aspects of humankind are described in the 1926 Lost Continent of Mu, Motherland of Man, as imperishable part of the Creator, and endowed with powers to rule the earth. James didn't elaborate on the technology that the people and colonists of Mu used to build the ancient megalithic monuments, such as those found at Baalbek, the Moai of Easter Island, or the colossal structures in South America. He does mention that there was no savagery before the destruction of Mu, and that after the submersion, life deteriorated sharply, even in the colonies. Dare I speculate on the existence of a device? Located on the now sunken continent of Mu, attuned to human brains to allow the performance of what we would consider amazing feats. To throw it all in one basket, according to James' theories, humans are created by a supreme spirit. Every human has a part of that spirit. Every human is endowed with powers to rule the earth. Life was carefree and simple before Mu was destroyed. Savagery and the collapse of civilization after Mu sank. Was a device located in Mu and attuned to that portion inherited from the Supreme Spirit used prior to Mu's destruction to facilitate human life? Did the device make humans capable of moving enormous loads and or other feats that we would consider magical? Or did the humans have technology linked to the device on Mu that allowed them to perform these amazing feats? This is only speculation and is a marked departure from James Churchward's theories. I leave it to the experts to decide whether or not these circumstances fit the ancient alien theory. I am honored to be able to consult an expert in the field of ancient alien theory, Phil Coppins, who is about to release his latest book, The Ancient Alien Question, and is well known from his appearance on the Ancient Alien series. I'm very happy that he is willing to entertain my speculation. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. I have laid out a scenario that could indicate ancient alien involvement in the lost continent of Mu. What do you think? Well, you know, when we're talking about all of these ancient civilizations, we know so little about them. And really, the question I think is, which we have to answer is, is this, like, you know, like, what is Mu? What do we understand with Mu? What do we understand with Atlantis? And when you start looking at just 
5,000 or 6,000 or 7,000 years ago, um, you will find that there are records from the ancient Egyptians and from other civilizations which say that in their past there have been um, people of non-human intelligence who have communicated with them, sometimes physically and sometimes, what I would say, more psychically, that somehow our ancestors were given tools and technology sometimes to access these different realms. So that is what we know from the written records. When we go to Atlantis or when we go to Mu, we're kind of going a step further back in time and we really um, are on, on difficult ground. But when you start looking at the Mahabharata or other legends of, of India, what they're saying is that there was a time in the past when there were these gods and that these gods were actually fighting here on planet Earth and in the skies above us. Uh, um, so the old civilizations do speak about previous times and so when it comes to the possibility of uh, alien intervention in, in our past, whether it's uh, in ancient Egypt, Atlantis or going as far back as, as, as Mu, I think the answer has to be yes, it's possible. Hot diggity. Um, thank you for your, your, your comments. Is there anything about your current project that you'd like to mention? Well, I'm um, obviously one of the people who's involved with Ancient Aliens, and uh, you know, the documentary is in its fourth season, uh, sorry, in its third season, that they're rather becoming its, its, its fourth season. And it's really, I think, interesting that there is so much interest, because each week over a million and a half people on the ratings chart, which actually means there's far more than that, um, tune in to watch this. So it's, it's successful and it shows that there's this interest and um, obviously the documentary itself shows a lot of, of Mu and of, of, of India specifically, but um, you know, the hook for the, the Churchwood dimension uh, is something which I feel is, is really something in which hopefully other documentaries which are in the pipeline like Civilization One um, or spin-off documentaries or one-off documentaries really should begin to focus on because I think it's one of these things that in the 1920s, whether it's Mitchell Hedges with the Crystal Skull, uh, whether it's Mu, whether it's so many other places, um, in, uh, we kind of seem to think that in the 1920s people were just inventing these things and then the rest was disproven. Well, when we bring it forward in the 1960s, we have von Däniken, um, and if we were to believe if what happened then in the 1970s he was disproven so really I think we're slowly working back in time and um, I hope we really get close uh, quickly to the mysteries of the 1920s um, and, and that is definitely something which I'm trying to always do I try to uh, highlight certain specifics and then hope that magazines or um, future documentary people uh, stumble upon the article and, and, and will take it from there and, the projects I'm doing right now specifically are very much to do with that ancient alien um, line of, of reasoning, trying to make it um, concise but also clear to the, to the general audience. So on November 15th I've got a book coming out called The Ancient Alien Question, which for is really written for the mass market. It's, it's a book which basically says how should we treat this ancient alien phenomenon um, what is there? What isn't there? What um, you know, kind of going beyond the, this television series and, and kind of putting some meat to the bone of some of the theories, but also looking at it, I think, in an innovative way because there's so much to do with ancient alien material. Material. Um, one of the things I, I, I already keep saying is that I, it's astonishing that since 1982, uh, scientists at NASA and so uh, at so many other places have identified that lying if as such the building blocks of life uh, are non-terrestrial in origin and they have found that since 1982 peer-reviewed scientific journals have really closed their doors or their, their pages uh, to, to this kind of um, articles being written by top scientists in their field um, as a result of which very few people really are aware of, of what's happening there so I'm, I'm sketching the, the larger picture and even though it's not specific to do with Mu or with Churchwood, I think the parallels are there. Um, with Mu, people do not want to touch it because they think it is almost contagious and it'll be a career killer. Um, but really it's not. You know, you, you have to have no fear. You need to go there and, and, and try to do it. Um, and, and there are several ways in which academics can explore this um, by being almost stoic or by, by saying, well, um, you know, we don't believe anything about Churchwood. But hey, we went to the temple and we were trying to find out whether there's a door 
where he clicked there was a door or kind of you know, really mundane aspects um, and from there you can take it take it one step at a time so um, it, it kind of like the parallels are there and, and this is something which I quite often find specifically when I'm writing about articles uh, it's the fact that I've written an article on say um, the underground of the Giza Plateau and the next article is going to be about some scientific uh, archaeological problem in France and I quite often think like hey I can just do a search and replace you know substitute Egypt with France substitute this guy with this guy and time and time again you find how uh, science really is unwilling to to look into anything which is too controversial, but um, I'm I'm really hoping that Mu and, and the Church word Enigma, as I call it at the moment, um, it, it is really going to get um, the attention it deserves because I think there is once again interest in the, uh, out there in the subject, and and I hope that people are going to react to it sooner rather than later. Well, thank you very much for for your insights, and um, thank you. Thank you. One neglected reference to the lost continent of Mu and space aliens is the Hihuva prophecy by Michel Desmarquet. The author does include a section on Mu in the book describing his travels in a spacecraft from another galaxy. Although there are some similarities between the two Mu's, there are some distinct differences. First, James never mentioned other humanoids or non-human intelligent beings in connection with the continent of Mu. Second, James never mentioned spacecraft or spaceports in his description of Mu or its people. These two elements are necessary to Desmarquet's premise and indicate that despite the similarities, these are two separate moves. I guess that I can never really say that I have pronounced the last word on space aliens and James Churchward, but I'll be sure to pass along any new developments as they happen. Thanks for listening, and have a great day. The my-moo.com podcast will be created on an irregular basis and address the state of the research post interviews with knowledgeable people, and challenge the status quo to arrive at a more complete understanding of James Churchward and his theory of a lost Pacific Ocean continent. Please check back frequently at my-moo.com or join our email list to keep up to date on our progress and join the discussions. This production, copyright 2011 by Jack Churchward, all rights reserved.